Welcome everyone to this next episode of C4 NPR Chats. I'm really excited to have Bill Wurzel with us. Bill is the director of our local small business development center, also known as the SBDC. Welcome, Bill. Thank you, Heather. Yeah, Bill's going to try and help us make sense of this ever-changing landscape <laughs> of federal funds available um, to nonprofits. And I, the first caveat right off the bat, Bill and I were talking about is, it's now 4.22 p.m. on Friday, April the 3rd, 2020. And this is what we know as of right now, because the landscape keeps changing. But um, Bill is a local representative. He and his staff, he'll talk a little bit about his role and how he can help you. But Bill, shall we jump in? Certainly. Okay. Let me explain a, a moment what the SBDC is. Mm -hmm. The small business development centers are the consulting arm of the Small Business Administration. So even though we are not employees of the SBA, we pretty much get a direct line to SBA management. Uh, and our program is uh, fostered out of the Cleveland office, district office uh, there. And so we have a great support team of SBA experts in Cleveland that help us to get access to information. Yes, and Bill and his team um, have a great and deep understanding of the local business and the nonprofit environment within the Toledo and surrounding area. So I'm really excited he's going to share what he knows as of this moment. So let's start really high level, Bill. What funds are available to nonprofits right now? Right now, there are two relatively easy programs to apply for. There is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. And that is approximately a two and a half page application that the funds are capped right now at $10,000. And that is because they want to get that money out within a week's of working week's business time into the hands of the people who need it. And that money is a direct loan from the SBA to the business or not-for-profit. So they will need access to their payroll from the previous year uh, and relative uh, information about uh, revenues and expenses. So okay. what, does the, what does the entity normally operate under? How much money does it usually gather in a year? How much are their expenses to operate for the year? And I think um, the acronym we're hearing around town is IDLE. Is that right for that loan? Idle or EDLE. EDLE yeah, okay. And so what um, expenses are, is that loan intended to cover for the nonprofit? Normal daily operating expenses. So that's payroll with benefits, not taxes on the payroll. Mm -hmm. So the government will not give you tax money to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, but payroll, the benefits, uh, health benefits, whatever it may be, up to a maximum of $100,000 per individual. So if there's someone on the staff that makes more than 100,000, in this program, they are capped at $100,000. Okay. Uh, and for the next one that I will talk about as well. Okay, so one other quick question. So if a, nonprofit, if a nonprofit doesn't currently have staff or payroll, they can't ask for money to cover if they want no. to hire somebody. No, no, this is for uh, this is really based on 2019 numbers. Okay. But they can also use it for their normal operating expenses. So if they have a lease or a mortgage that they have to pay on, or their uh, utility bills, or their internet access, those types of expenses are normal everyday overhead, and they are what this is considered to be for. Okay. So the second one, the second loan. The second loan is the Paycheck Protection Program. And that is mostly to pay for payroll for any individual, once again, capped out at over $100,000, for any individual who is now on the payroll or has been on the payroll in the past year for the not-for-profit. So it's not for adding new payroll, but it is for people who have been with the program. This is to try to help them to pay your payroll for the next eight weeks so that your, your staff does not go on unemployment. And it's good to cover payroll and benefits. If it is used for those purposes, it is 100% uh, 
forgivable. Hmm. If it's used to pay other expenses, it is 75% forgivable. And then the interest rate, I think for not-for-profits would still be either a half or 1%. But it's obviously not a difficult uh, process to go through, nor is it expensive for any entity to go through. And this application has to be made to the local bank that you have your operating expense account in. So each bank has its own way of, of taking these applications. Huntington has their own form. Some of the smaller banks are just taking the SBA form that is available online when you type in uh, SBA PPP or Payroll Protection Program. Okay, so for those um, people out in the nonprofits who may not know this, some banks are designated as SBA lenders. Yes. Are these loans, do they have to go through an SBA lender to? No. No. no, this is open now to any bank that is FDIC approved. Okay. And that's almost every bank. That's Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation approved. Um, banks don't really operate any longer without that FDIC assistance. So it sounds like you're recommending that they go to their current bank yes. and negotiate the loan with them. Yes. Okay. Because it's the current bank that is going to be lending you the money. Okay. And is that true for both loans, Bill, both the no. idle loan? No. The idle loan is direct from the SBA. Okay. So that's an online application? Yes. Okay. About two and a half pages. Okay. So idle loan is online. Yes. The PPP, yes. the payroll protection plan, is through your local bank? Yes. Okay. Good. Well, that clears up some things. Um, so one other thing we've been asked, I've received the question a number of times, is it true that there's a limited amount of funds available and that applications will be processed on a first come first serve basis? I don't know about first come first serve, but it could be somewhat need based. But yes, there is a limited amount of money that was approved during the CARES Act, the C-A-R-E-S Act, that was signed into law just about a week ago now. Uh, and that was uh, $350 billion, which sounds like a huge amount of money, but this is a nationwide program. Mm -hmm. So uh, we do expect that there will be some limitations. Uh, now, however, if you're working with your bank, then the bank will help you to determine what your access to capital really is. And maybe they'll also have some other programs that will fall into place along with this. I don't know what those would be right now, but mm -hmm. the situation is so fluid that things are changing on a daily basis. Okay. I can well imagine the banks are really busy trying to get people scheduled right now. Yes. And, and <laughs> several of the banks were already turning down their own customers because they didn't have stockpiles of cash to pay these loans. Hmm. Okay. That, that's been a bigger concern of ours is that some of the smaller banks just were not embracing the program just due to the capital access that they that, that people are asking for. Okay. All right. Um, we're going to talk about Bill and his group's role and, and services available in a second here, but there are um, a couple of handy comparison sheets, summary sheets out on our website c4npr.org and when you are on the home page you'll see right at the top there's a link to the COVID resource and information page so that should be very easy to find because um, it lays down the program side by side because one of, honestly Bill one of the most common questions that we're getting is how do I know what the best choice is for me so um, can you just talk a little bit about your role and the services that are available to the community uh, as it relates to these loans? As it relates to the, to the loans, we are trying to help people to make sure that they have the information that they need available as they're making the application. Because that's what really is the holdup for a lot of things is that the, the applicant is in the midst of the paperwork, particularly for the EIDL, and there's some little piece of information like the routing number for their checking account. Yeah. Uh, it's a simple little thing, but you need that. Someone else just emailed me, where do I find my EIN number? Well, the EIN number is on their tax returns. 
but very few people actually realize that, and the EIN is the employer identification number. Everyone that has a checking account that pays payroll has to have an EIN number, and that's what they were looking for. Okay, and what's the best way for someone to connect with you and the SBDC? It really would be best if they could email us. And, and my email address is bill, B-I-L-L dot Wurzel, that's W-E-R-S-E-L-L, -L, at Toledo Chamber dot com. Great. Is there anything else that's important to share that I haven't asked you yet about this topic? Be patient. Be patient. There are millions of applications going in to the SBA. The SBA has always had uh, disaster loan programs. Uh, after every major uh, um, hurricane down south, after every tornado up north here, when there is a disaster zone that's been declared, the SBA gets into gear for this. We have never, ever had a national disaster going on at the same time. So all 50 states are applying for these funds at the same exact time. The system yeah. was never built for that. So you get your application in, let that ride for a few days before you start bugging the SBA again for where's my application. Okay. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to do this, Bill. Again, stay tuned for um, really up to the minute updates from, from the center. Um, and from the SBA and from your bank. Um, the best way, of course, as a reminder to stay in touch with the center is to make sure si we're signed up. You are signed up for our e-news and you can do that at the bottom of our homepage. You just enter a little bit of information. Normally we only send them out every other week, but obviously in the last couple of weeks there have been special bulletins coming out. So we hope this has helped answer some of your questions. Bill and his team are available. And again, the request is to send a request to the email. That's probably the quickest way to get a response. And we hope to see you on a future episode of C4MPR Chats. Thank you, Heather.